So we're still on the binomial theorem topic, and we're on example one. We've worked out how to find the value of a combination, n choose r. And here's a wee example of how to work back. So in this case here, we know the answer is 6. Uh, and we're trying to find one of the elements, either n or r. And that's when the binomial coefficient formula kind of works uh, a wee bit better. We don't really need it when we're just calculating n choose r when we know those two values. But if we've got a little bit of algebra to play with, then the binomial coefficient formula comes into play. So we can say find n when n choose r, n choose 2 is 6. Okay, we can think about that in different ways. We could say in terms of r being the position in a row, for what row would the position number 2 be 6? Basically, with what row are we dealing with or how many items would I have to have so that there's six ways I could choose to. So it's good to be able to tell that story, be able to interpret in slightly different ways. So in this kind of situation here, here we'll get n choose 2 is 6. Remember that 2 is basically the value of r at the moment. But binomial coefficient formula says something like n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. And we know that that has a value of 6. So we can substitute in n is n, so we can't do anything with that, but we do know that r is 2. So we have a situation where we can construct that. And what we can then do is to use our simplification. We can remember that n factorial can be represented as n multiplied by the next number down, multiplied by the next number down again, and you can at any point you could put in a factorial sign there. So the term n factorial can be represented by this here. We can put our fraction, we've got 2 factorial multiplied by n minus 2 factorial. And we can simplify it because on the numerator and the denominator we have a factor of n minus 2 factorial. So we could divide through like that and that leaves us with n times n minus 1 and 2 factorial is just 2 and so we end up with this slightly simpler equation here. Multiply both sides by 2. And we get that. And if you look at that, we're going to get an n squared term on the left hand side. We're really solving a quadratic equation. So knowing that, I'm going to bring the tw 12. I'm going to take 12 away from both sides so that I've got a quadratic equation. I think I'll factorise it. Factors of negative 12 that add to negative 1. We're going to have n minus 4, and we're going to have n plus 3 equals 0. And solving that, then either n minus 4 equals 0, or n plus 3 equals 0 n is 4, or n is negative 3. So we know that we get two solutions from a quadratic equation. However, not all the solutions are always valid. And in this case here, n has to be positive, because we have to have a positive number of items from which to choose. So in this case here, n minus 3 is not valid. n equals negative 3 is not valid, as n it's going to have to be a whole number. We'll say it's greater or equal to 1. In fact, it's going to have to be greater or equal to 2 because we're trying to choose two things from it. Which means that the only valid solution is n equals 4. So we could end with a flourish. n equals 4. 
i.e. n oops 4 choose 2 is equal to 6 okay that is the way we can work back and we can use the binomial theorem uh, the coefficient formula okay let's practice